It was early April, the official month of spring and surprise when I took you home, grandly pulled you to my kitchen window and announced the gates of righteousness. The bannered face of this gigantic church looming like want from across the street. Look, I insisted, and you did at the block letters perched on pillars beneath a golden dome, at the stone design that doesn't match the neighborhood at all. Who needs Manhattan's luxury condos when you can live in the midst of grave engraved greatness like this? You were tickled, more by my presentation than the actual fact. You were not the first I'd shown, but everyone is always delighted, and so were you, amused, to be so introduced to stand in front of something so utterly invented, almost ridiculous in its power, solemn in its sincerity, and all the more dangerous for it. That night, you held me for the first time. Met my fear with your own atop a twin bed, and we touched without kissing until we had to. An unspoken challenge that we met head on with graceless intimacy and panicked breathing. That, like a precocious small child speaking too loudly on the street, embarrassed and announced us to ourselves. You whispered how afraid you were that this motion would stop, that we would snap, severed wishbone, and I would no longer speak to you. I would walk on the sidewalks of my days with my hands clasped to each other or to another, but not to yours. You frightened me with your emphasis on having and holding and stay, and so I went to the bathroom, backlit by the moon's bounce off the gold roof, glinting down at me, the kind of light that allowed me to pee in the dark and collect my thoughts. I tried to sort them, but they were each one a replica, tacky, candy hearts with the same damn inscription. On one side, the first realization, I am going to break her. And on the other, the second, I am going to break. I re-entered my bedroom and I gave them to you. These sugary, chalky fears, role-playing revelation, defense masquerading as applause-worthy truth. I promise you nothing was all I could say. Seven months later, I do not talk to you. Like you feared, we both wake up every morning alone and we both pass the night the same way, hands clutching only our own hands under a sky of silence and inevitability. But under the memory, two of that first night in the grandest of female and architectural company when I felt the tiniest brush stroke, a stray paint fleck even, of what the world calls love. How giddy I felt then to show off where I lived, who I was, how much I could want you, and what I saw and what I daily see, a building that building, like all buildings, which, under their own sky of silence and inevitability and time and breaking and absence and nothing and numbness and apology and days and days and days and days, like me, like you, will always fall.